Okay, so this is the first in what I think is going to be a four-part series on upgrading the suspension on the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. And I would like to point out that the modifications that I'm making to the Interceptor 650 will also apply to the Continental GT 650. We're going to be using the same components the compatible with both models. Before we get going with this video, I need to explain why I'm splitting this up into four different parts. Today I'm going to be replacing the rear shocks on the interceptor, and I've also got a set of YSS adjustable preload front springs for the front fork suspension on the interceptor. Now I've done a few suspension upgrade videos in the past and the way I see it if I'm going to do it I need to do it properly you see it so many times where people you know they just fit some new suspension and then tell you how wonderful it is the truth is it doesn't really work like that new suspension takes a few miles to wear in it's usually very stiff out of the box and it usually takes at least a few hundred miles for that stiffness to wear off and for the springs to relax. Also, with multi-adjustable suspension, it needs to be dialed in and that takes time. So if you want a thorough, honest review of suspension products, this is the way it needs to be done. Today I'm going to be showing you the YSS top line gas shocks. I'm also going to be fitting them. In part two, once I've got a few miles on the bike and dialed them in, I'll be doing a review on my perceived improvements in performance. We'll then, in part three, go on to modifying the front suspension, including a full fitting video. And in part four, we'll again be assessing the performance upgrade, the difference that it's made to the bike. Really, it needs to be split up in this manner, because if I replaced all the suspension at once, I can't give you an accurate assessment of what each individual component is doing because I've changed too much all in one go and that's likely to just cloud the issue these components are top grade high quality components they are also quite expensive so I think this format that I've chosen is the best way to go so that I can give you an accurate idea of what to expect if you lay your money down on them Suspension for the Interceptor 650 has got to be one of the most frequently asked questions that I get. Some people criticise the stock suspension on the Interceptor really heavily. With people complaining about the front forks bottoming out, the rear end weaving, suspension being too stiff, the suspension being too soft, it really is mind-boggling the different ways that people perceive the suspension, not just on this bike, but on any bike. And this is the problem that most bike manufacturers have to contend with. Riders are different weights. A lot of people ride solo. Some like to ride two up all the time, or at least a lot of the time. Some people like to just cruise around and like a comfortable ride. Others like to ride the bikes hard and they expect exceptional handling and performance from the suspension. This is a really tall order for a one size fits all type suspension unit. The type of suspension unit that a manufacturer has at his disposal. When the manufacturer is building a bike, he has a very tight budget. I know for guys in the UK, you know, you paid five and a half thousand pounds for this bike. So you probably have it in your head that the suspension at the rear, the rear shocks cost maybe a hundred pounds. But in reality, really, you couldn't be further from the truth. The manufacturer has to make a profit. He has to sell it on to either a dealer or to an importer stroke distributor who then have to sell it on to one of their dealers and every one of those businesses has to make a profit then of course we've got various purchase taxes to add to the cost of the bike on the road the price that you the customer pays for it 
So, in order to make all that work, to make it all come together in a package that is affordable, the manufacturer actually has only a fraction of the end purchase price to spend on building the bike. And in the case of your rear shock absorbers, you're probably looking at round about £20 for the pair. That's all they have to spend. So when you consider the actual scope, the variety of people that they're trying to please with this setup, they actually do quite well. But quite well for a lot of people isn't good enough. Which is why suspension upgrades are probably the most popular upgrades on any production bike after purchase. Now before we get into these shocks I would like to shout out a big thank you to Wiimoto for assisting me with these videos by supplying me with these YSS suspension components. Now YSS is a Thailand based company that started production in 1983 and since then believe it or not they have become the world's biggest producer of aftermarket performance suspension systems for motorcycles being the biggest means that you've got volume and if you've got volume sales that means that you have the money to spend on proper development and that in my mind is the reason that YSS thrashes a lot of the competition. It gives them the ability to provide products that are equal to the best, both in quality and performance, but at a more realistic price. Don't just take my word for that, do some research on them. These particular shocks are designed specifically for the Continental GT and the Interceptor 650s. They are the Black Edition Topline series, which are fully adjustable for both preload and damping. This means that the individual rider has almost limitless options for tuning these shocks in to fit their exact requirements. Make no mistake, although these may look similar to the stock shocks, they are about as far removed from the stock shocks as you could possibly get. The Gabriels fitted to the Interceptor and the Continental GT have a cam system for adjusting the preload and they are preload adjustable only. And this cam system only allows for about 5 or 6 preset preload positions, which is the main reason why some people find it impossible to find a preload position that suits them. The YSS top line, on the other hand, has a professional grade continuous thread adjustment position, which basically means you can alter the preload by about a millimetre at a time. And with an overall preload distance of around about 4 inches, this allows pinpoint accurate adjustment to get the preload adjusted to exactly where you need it to be, rather than someone else's preconceived idea of about where it should be. Damping is adjusted via a dial right at the very bottom of the shock. Each position has a very positive click and the direction for softening or increasing damping are clearly shown. It's a doddle. The build quality is absolutely superb. I personally love the Black Edition, but if you want something a little bit more conventional, they have the standard silver and black version. Fitting is really simple and straightforward. Let's go through it and then I'll show you how to adjust everything. Now, I would advise that you only change one shock at the time. Don't remove both of them. It's just going to be a nightmare to refit the new ones. It doesn't matter which side you start on, but whichever side you choose, start by removing the mounting bolt from the top. Then, with a 14mm spanner, remove the shock pin from the bottom. This does fasten into a captive nut, so it's really simple. All you have to do is remove the actual bolt itself. Once you've done that, it's just a really simple matter of giving the actual shock absorber a little bit of a jiggle as you remove that bottom pin. 
and carefully just manipulate it out of the way. Once you've done that, you're ready to fit your new shock absorber. I always found that once you've got it into position, it's easier to insert the eyelet at the top onto the mounting post before inserting the bottom pin back in. Now, if you find that there's a bit of a mismatch and you can't get the pin in, either the shock is too short or it's too long, adjust the preload at the top to lengthen or shorten the shock so that it lines up. Don't forget to use a medium strength Loctite on both your bottom and your top mounts, both sides. And I tighten both of mine up to 25 Newton meters. Then repeat this process on the other side and that's your shock absorbers fitted. It is a really simple job. Spring preload is really simple. On your adjustment collar, you will find a small Allen screw. And this basically locks the collar in place and stops it moving while the bike's on the move accidentally. You need to slacken this off before you can adjust your preload. Just be careful not to unscrew it all the way. You don't want it falling out and losing it. A suitable sized Allen key is provided with your shock kit. Also an adjustment bar for actually adjusting the collar. There are several sockets situated around the collar and the adjustment bar simply inserts into these. You rotate the collar to the right to reduce preload and you rotate it to the left to increase preload. And when you've completed your adjustment, don't forget to tighten that grub screw back up again, but be careful not to over tighten it. You don't want to damage the threads. When you receive your shock absorbers, you should find that they're adjusted to about the midway point. I always like to arrange the grub screw, the locking screw, so that it's facing outwards. That makes it easily accessible and it also ensures that you can keep an eye on it, just in case it manages to work itself loose. And the last thing that you need to do before first riding the bike is checking that the preload is adjusted equally on both sides. I normally do this by just inserting my fingernail into the grooves between the threads and counting how many grooves there are on either side. And from the factory you should find that you can count about 16 grooves. Obviously if you find that there are more grooves on one side than the other it means that it needs adjusting so that they are equal and balanced. Likewise, when it comes to making any adjustments to the preload, ensure that you make an equal number of turns on either side so that you're adjusting either side exactly the same amount. And it's always worth just doing this fingernail check thing when you've finished before riding off. It is easy to lose track sometimes how many turns you've made, especially if you're having to adjust it by quite some way. And I would recommend that you store your adjustment bar and your Allen key in your onboard toolkit so that it's always on the bike if you need it. If you don't have it with you, it's not the end of the world. As long as you've got a suitable sized Allen key, usually a crosshead screwdriver is about the same diameter and you can actually adjust the colour with a screwdriver. And that's really all there is to it. Now, I'm not entirely sure how long it's going to take me to get these dialed in, but rest assured, the minute I'm happy with the results, and I know where I am with it, I will publish the next video. To ensure that you don't miss out on that, and to keep up to date, make sure that you're subscribed, and make sure that you've hit the notification button, so that you can be informed as soon as it's uploaded. I will, of course, leave a link to Wiimoto's site so that you can have a good look at all the Interceptor and Continental GT specific parts that they're currently offering, including both these shocks and the front fork spring kit. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate the time that you take and the way that you support this channel. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't enjoyed it, leave a dislike, I don't care. I will, of course, be back next week, so until then, please ride safely, and I'll see you soon.